Welcome to my first electrostatic speaker. These are Martin Logan ESL X's and they were sent to me by a patron. He's like, hey, I'm buying these. I'm sending them to you. And I'm like, whoo, shit. It means I gotta work. And they're, I'm gonna air quote the words cheap compared to like, like Magna Pans are cheaper, but this is Martin Logan and they use the curved diaphragm and oh, and this is the bigger model with the dual firing eights and mm, they're $4,000 a pair. Platinum edition, everybody, everybody happy? I'm, I'm happy. So these are a pain in the ass. I want you to just note the placement and the room. Like my couch is like, I was going to, like, usually I just push the couch against the thing and I stand up and I talk, but I, I really wanted to listen to these speakers like for a good solid hour and a half before I did this review because I've had them for reasons we'll get into. I've only had one of them for a bit. And my couch, if I want to sit where I'm comfortable, most comfortable, comfortablest on my couch, it's sort of like this end leaning on some fluffy pillows from Ikea with the back and that's one of those... Um, what is that Chewbacca? That's that purple like super seat. I'll link it in the description. And this is like the throne of Z. But the thing is my day bed or Chewbacca's day bed like prevents me from putting the couch like right there with my own Walsh's it's fine. With my own Walsh's you could be off center a little bit and it's fine. And with normal speakers you gotta lean over and come back it's, it's, it's great. But I have to jank my couch this so that my head when I'm resting here is precisely in the middle of this because Martin Logan electrostats. Now that's just some, not just Martin Logan, that's gonna be any real electrostats. You see, these work on the principle of electrostatic magic. Chewbacca's sleeping there, by the way, she's fine. Um, if you've ever watched me review any Stax gear, this is what Stax use, only they use like that much and this uses a, a lot like 60 inches of a lot a lot of thing happening so what do i think i think when i'm not renting this apartment it's hard to tell i'm renting but when i'm not renting this apartment and i actually own a house i will probably own a set of martin logan electrostats but not these no, not these piddly $4,000 things. Ha! <laughs> My tea drinking finger goes up. No. One of the best listening experiences I've ever had was, I think, Rocky Mountain four years ago. And they were the, uh, the, the art series. They were a closet door. Like, not a little closet door. They were a full, this high this wide panel with a, a curved section and then a flat section. And they were like 16 feet apart in this giant room. And I was all the way back there. And there was row after row after row of seats between me and that speaker. Like I could barely see this mountain of speaker. And they put on a singer and it was like a real baritone guy. And when he sang, like it was impo it was like um, Vega the Carpathian from uh, Ghostbusters 2 when he's that giant omniscient head floating there and I heard like there was no other speaker that mattered after the CL art series CL art I'll find a link to those specific speakers and put them in the description I don't know if you can find a buying link I just I'll find an article or something these you can buy and these you can buy uh, several places. I'm going to link Audio Advisor because I had an issue with one of them where I may have blew it up and they were nice enough to have FedEx come pick up the box and a couple days later after they inspected it and said yep it blew up send another one that I've been breaking in. Um, what happened with that was uh, some weird static discharge thing with my right amp setup. Currently the amp setup is an Emotiva ooh, XPA Gen 3, which is the one that runs on the class H blades, H class, I think is what they're calling it. So that, that's also owned by uh, my patron who's loaning me these. So that's his, these are his, this however is an LKS Digital 
DAC, which APOS Audio has loaned to me for review. And I'm using that to control the signal, so we're getting fiber optic out of my computer, fiber optic in, balanced out into the amp, the amp through, and I'm gonna yell about Martin Logan for a second, because they, I read the manual for these, and they're like very, very specific. Buy expensive speaker cables. It matters more than the gauge. It matters so much that you use expensive, high-end speaker cables, and it really shouldn't. Uh, you know, copper, nothing wrong with it, and high enough gauge for the distance should be fine. I'm using Micah uh, speaker cables here, which I will attempt to link Micah speaker cables, but they're usually in and out of stock because they're amazing. And uh, oh, another thing I should tell you about these speakers is they don't just wire to an amplifier. You see, since we're dealing with electrostatics, this isn't just a speaker. This is doing weird... I will describe it because I usually do it when I'm talking about stacks. And this is actually much easier to, like, see. Ignore that. That was a shipping issue. But you've got a metal grill here that's painted, and you could touch it. Look, it's just a metal grill. And you've got a metal grill back here that's painted and you could touch it, see it's fine. And inside of there is a see-through transparent membrane that is magically stretched and curved all the way down. And the way it works is the back side of the membrane has a coating on it that can be electrostatically charged, like when you rub your feet on the carpet, but not. And then the front metal and back metal can switch polarities. Really, 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 really fast. And cause that whole panel, this entire size, to move out or in or out and in. Not at different times, or the whole thing emits sound. And because it's on an angle, it emits sound in a 30 degree uh, fan. Chewbacca's completely not interested in any of this. Yeah, I know I heard your name, baby. I'm sorry. You go back to sleep. Sleepy time. So, the crossover point, and I'm going to demonstrate this because I think it needs to be demonstrated, is 400 hertz. If you don't know how, I'm, I can't get into, I can't teach everybody like it's kindergarten. You got to know what frequency responses are. You got to know that when you build a speaker, the bass driver usually goes up to a certain amount and the tweeter takes over. Now, this is only a two-way where it has, and I can't uncover the front because I'm afraid I'm going to break it, but there's a covered eight inch here. The back ugh, has an eight inch, which I guess I could take these off. Oh, I got to talk about the build quality. For some reason, they decided to make this an entire piece of wood, which is a whole cutout. It did not need to be this, Martin Logan. This is heavy. I had to carry these up the steps. So you get a backwards firing eight inch and a forwards firing eight inch. The lesser models in this only have a port in the back. So you're getting sound transmission forward and sound transmission backwards on the bass. And I don't, it's not a tweeter. 400 and above is a lot of range, but also 400 and below is a lot of range for an eight inch. These speakers take care. They're not just like, oh yeah, I got my parents a set of, you know, Martin Logan electrostatics and I'm sure they'll hook up fine. I'm an obsessive compulsive asshole. And I think Joe, the patron that bought these knew that if I got them, I would lose, like balding would start and I'd have rashes because if I'm gonna link to the manual, go to the description of this video, there's a PDF and just go to the positioning and tweaking and retweaking and explains room acoustics and all you need to get soft. They're talking about how hard or soft your walls are because of how much you need to fuck with these to get them to be perfect. And you can get them. I have right here, let me take the remote out of my pocket. If I, oh yeah, oh yeah, foot up. Look at the vent. The vent should be slightly to the left because it's not centered, but then I have the posts and that and I look down the sides of the speaker to see how much speaker side I could see. And this is the music. And if I, I'm going to put on shuffle and I'm going to lower it a bit. That's o Overseer Never from the Wreckage sound album, which is one of my favorite albums of all time, by the way. 
no subwoofers involved. So you now have two eight inch front and rear firing. I'm not sure if one's passive or not. They, neither one might be passive. I think they might both just be active speakers. And they are recovering 400 Hertz and down. And then you have 400 Hertz and up covered by the actual electrostatics, which I gotta get to it, require a separate external power supply. That this whole 12, 10 minute rant was about this. Here, this thing. How are you? 15 volt, 0.7 amp. It's just a plastic transformer. This is a transformer and you have to plug it in there and there's a little blue LED. The blue LED, you just smash the whole speaker with like a baseball bat. There is a separate energizer that has to energize the panel. And then the speaker amp terminals are what drive that positive and negative transformer push. So the electronics in here, which is what I probably blew up when I threw static through it, if that's what even did it, I'm not sure. I'm uh, not guilty, Your Honor. But the electronics in here are like, they're electronics. They're not just a simple crossover. There's things that are powered and active doing things inside of this. Wipe that off. So, I want to I want to state something. Princess Pasta, who I think some of you have know, uh, actually owned a set of these, bigger ones. I don't know how. I don't know how she did it, but she thinks they're the most beautiful speakers in the world, and I'm not going to argue that fact. For some reason having like an op. It's not. It's not translucent. It's not transparent. Translucent. Transparent. Opaque just panel that you can just see the world through. Even in just black, which is, I'm so bored of black, but even just the monoliths of sound, they are gorgeous. We have some um, Clip Charity 4s back here, which are a complete, like you couldn't ask for, those, those are 3,000 a pair and these are 4,000 a pair and you couldn't ask for a bigger contrast in the last, week for me to go from those to these and these to those is like oh my brain I hope the camera battery doesn't die because we have a lot to talk about are these worth it Zios yes they're yes they're worth it are they worth the trouble of having to skew your couch so that your, your perfect sitting position is here yes um another patron of mine lives in the UK very small apartments he lives in London and he's sent pictures and descriptions of like where his is like hey should I get these Martin Logans he's excited he wants them and I saw his living conditions which by the way beautiful apartment but small and I went oh god okay if you get rid of your dining room your television that ugly couch that other couch that's much nicer it, you basically he would have to start from scratch like pretend someone came and stole all his furniture Put these speakers in, tweak them placement-wise, because they tell you at least two feet from the wall. And there's reasons for that, because the, the sound shoots out this way. And if you're too close to a wall, it'll shoot out and reflect right back, and then you'll have mismatching alignment, and it'll be bad. So you need a, de you need a dedicated soul. Not a room. The room doesn't matter. You can do it in any room. But you have got to be prepared for these to take over that room. There's no like, ah, eh, just shove them in the corners, they'll be fine. They will not be fine. You, you read the manual, the PDF manual, read it. Like, read it. Like, when they're telling you to whip out a flashlight so that you see which part of this curved thing you're getting the reflection of the flashlight in. I mean, it makes me happy because it, it forces people to actually pay attention. A lot of times placement is completely ignored. And everyone's like, ah, speakers, great speakers. No, 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 placement. More so than needing that uh, better speaker cable is you need to place it properly. And to that end, I'm gonna point out something else that's happening in my living room that is not in the manual, but these speakers right now are pretty much vertical. There's maybe like two degrees they are leaning back. And that's because I've shoved um, bench dogs Bench pucks underneath the back. I should have an extra one here to show you. But these are little, I'll get down on my knees. These are little bench dog pucks, look at them. Aren't they cute? They're from working on plywood and things on a, like a workbench. And they just lift it up about three quarters of an inch, five eighths to three quarters of an inch. And because of that, that tilts the panel towards where I'm sitting. 
Um, more about placement and the failures that you can not even like may find, will find. I think they leave these tilted back further so that when people walk into Best Buy, Magnolia, or go to auto shows, audio shows, you're standing here and they sound great. The problem is once you get them home, that's probably where you're gonna be. You know, down here. And you could just, it's very simple. You could get a, uh, a perpendicular thing and hang it there and it comes straight out with a laser and you're just gonna see exactly where that's going to hit because you don't wanna be down here and you don't wanna be up here. You want this to point directly at your face from the center. And putting those little bench, uh, the hell, bench cookie, bench cookies under the back, solve that for me. Uh, those legs, by the way, also contain spikes. There's little rubber caps you can pull off. Then there's a metal spike, which at least they warn you multiple times to not do that until you're absolutely sure where you're putting them. Because if you put them there and then try to adjust them and it slides, it's just gonna scratch holes or tear up your carpet. And you can adjust the height. But these, and I'm my, he's coming here to listen to them without that like tilt to straighten that out. I, I was just not, I was sitting here not enjoying the speaker. It had been MIA for like a week and a half. I had a break in the other apartment on my Sonos amp. And I'm just sitting here going, what's wrong? And then I stand up. And from where I was standing to right here was perfect to where I was sitting was like, these are one of the only speakers that I've ever used that when you're playing music, not that music. If you're, if you literally have your favorite song playing, you're sitting in the perfect spot and life is grand, and then you get up because you want to refill your drink. You want Pepsi because Coke is swill. You want Pepsi. You want, I want to go fill my Pepsi. Give me my Pepsi. Pepis. You stand up, walk left, and all of a sudden it sounds like your speakers are playing in a completely different room. Like over there. Like you know when someone's playing their, their music way too loud, like four rooms down and it's just blasting and you could kind of tell what the music is. These do that. Because you go from such perfection here, like it is, it is $4,000 worth it right here but not worth it. So, I mean, look, you can put these on at a party. You can put these on to casually listen while you're cooking. But unlike the Ohm Walsh's, which are my babies, which are my speakers, 2,800 a pair, a bargain. Unlike these, which use the exact opposite of specific refined placement techniques, like those, Shove them closer to the wall so you get more reflection and then twist them a little bit and you're good. And when you walk away from one, the tweeter is more, more at you from that one. So this tweeter is less at you so you get sort of like a good center image. They're magical. The ohms are magical. The ohms are a perfect party speaker. These are the worst party speaker if people are actually here to listen to music. Um, a lot of times you go to the, the trade shows, the audio shows, and you walk into a room with electrostatic panels and unlike most rooms that have like nine seats, like one, two, three, four, or they go, you know, 12 seats, 50, three or four. And they are in a perfectly straight centered line because you will not want to spend 25, 30, $70,000 on an electrostatic panel if you're not here. If you're here, it's worthless. If you're here, it may be the best thing you've ever heard. And that's the only thing I have to tell you about these speakers before I go into how great they are. Placement is fucking everything. And I'm a tweak freak, so I'm, I'm into this. Joe's gonna be into it, he's, gonna, he's like, I'm gonna put it in my hallway and I'm just gonna like build a wall behind it, it'll be perfect. He, he's the type of person that can get this done. I'm the type of person that can get this done because I can spend hours just, just no, this, 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 further apart, closer. I had them, I had moved my subwoofers. At one point, my living room had only these speakers in it, and I put them behind the projection screen. So the screen came down and it was right here. And I was watching movies and I was like, what? But then, here's the thing, my friend came over. 
He's like, hey, knives out. You wanna watch knives out? Sure, great. Move the couch here. I sit here, he sits there, cause you know, no touching. No touching, social distancing before that was even a thing. And all I heard was that speaker. And all he heard was that speaker. And when the movie was over, I'm like, sit in the middle and listen to this now. And he went from one side of the couch to the middle and he made sense. It made sense. So I'm, I'm gonna hammer that point. These are amazing speakers. Like some of the best I've ever heard. Choo Choo Train. When you can perfectly sit, the, these are these are special, but but they need special care. You can't just like pfft, whatever. Ohms actually need like less work than anything. Just shove them, keep shoving them into the corners until they sound great. Then twist them. Like, perfect. Those like triangles that I talked about, the uh, esprits. See, I got it right. The triangle esprits. The tweeter on them was magnifique. In fact, I would even say that the tweeter detail on that, even though it was only like a $1,300 pair, probably beats this. But here's what you're getting. You're getting a wall, like a legit wall. Like the ohms can produce low end and mids that bounces around the whole side and you get in the tweeter is sort of there. This is the high end and most of the mid range, because remember 400 Hertz and up, just being delivered to you from a surfboard. Well, no, it's probably small than a surfboard. And it's probably bigger than a longboard. I don't know, some sort of board, ironing board? An ironing board, no one uses those, no one irons. <laughs> Bass response, I should probably talk about. That's another thing, because now, if we talk about dealing with just the panel, then th that was the entire discussion I just gave. Uh, the fact that I have glass windows behind it is a no-no, however, they're talking about within two feet, you don't wanna be that close. I am at least four to five feet from that window. And here's the thing, we're gonna take a walk next to my Bok Bok Bear. She's so sleepy. And we're gonna look at this window. There. Maybe we could do better on the other side. Um, the sound shoots out 30 degrees this way. But since it's curved backwards on the other side, it focuses like a late, like when you hold a magnifying glass up to the sun. And on this side, it focuses like right here. And there is this weird point where it then hits the windows. I'm far enough away that it's not doing it. But when I had these slightly closer to that window, you could have sworn your hand to the stars that this window was just another one of those speakers. Cause it just, complete copy back out. And that's something you gotta deal with with distance. But when you move that base driver, which is a front and rear firing eight, away from the wall, you get less and less base response. Because if you ever put a subwoofer just in the middle of your room, it doesn't sound very good. It doesn't sound very impactful, certainly. You're supposed to find like the edge where the bass sounds the most even for the room modes. And so as you pull that speaker away from the wall, yes, you're helping the panels live, but you're sort of losing that low end. So at one point, I'll tell you a minor story. I know this, my reviews are just basically all stories. But when I first got this, which one is set up to demo this? This one is set up to demo this. I'm going to disconnect. There, we'll put this there, and we're just gonna disconnect this one like that. I did that. Right now, only this panel will play. The bass driver on that won't play, and the bass driver on that won't play. It's just going to be this panel. I was having this discussion in a taxi in downtown. If you think that sounds terrible because I'm filming with a GoPro Hero 8, you're wrong. This sounds like the radio from Portal. Like, that like, doo -doo 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 -doo, like really cheap, like doo -doo -doo. But that's, it is not impressive on its own. That as its own thing. If someone came to me and said, hey man, you gotta hear this new thing I developed and it was just. I would laugh in their face and be like, what the fuck is this? 
That's how much responsibility, which now if I do that, I'm not even gonna play that on its own. But it's a weird construct because this is all treble and upper mid-range. And that means you're relying down here on an eight inch to fill in the gaps. And in my mind, that doesn't work. That's like if you just built a tower speaker and you had an eight inch on the bottom and you just mounted a tweeter right here. And like no mid-range at all because it's just 400 Hertz is not, 400 Hertz is not, it should be more impactful than that. It sounds like shit when you do that. Now that's designed so that you could actually do bi amping. And I um, was playing around, I'll put this back together before, before anything bad else happens. You go back. I was playing around with my Infinity 10 inch and the Mini DSP just because, I mean, I, I'm, I'm paid to play around. So at one point I decided to find out if I could Remove the bottom eights entirely from the situation, push the speakers against the wall or back further, and then I used my tens with the mini DSP and I just tweaked that mini DSP until those tens reached all the way up because I have full access to them. There are direct connection to that crown amp. That crown amp over there controls those. And I managed to make these sound as good as the factory speaker by using this just for 415 Hertz and above. Like I twisted it and tweaked it and, did, uh, and it was beautiful. So what that tells me is the speakers work. Like you don't need to do that. What I'm talking about, it was just some fun thing I did and I was very proud of it. And it took me a lot of time that I didn't need to spend, but I did it. And, but now you hook everything back up. Simpson, Homer Simpson. Homer Simpson is, he's not quite you know, this big ahead, but he is a massive Homer Simpson singing to me from the TV in front of me. It is, it is a, an experience. If I shuffled and I got to like, oh, piano is great. Like that. This is Berserk Arc 2, Taut Pur uh, Le Victori. Um, I played a lot of the interstellar soundtrack on this and that it becomes it's that same experience that the interstellar soundtrack gives you on top of the experience the interstellar soundtrack gives you the cathedral the church the organ the bigness as much as i want to tell you that while well, the triangles tweeter did more to bring detail out yeah but the triangles tweeter was this big and this tweeter is uh, 47 inches tall. So no matter what I think about the very, very finite little details, th this is insane. This is, this is exactly what I expected the Martin Logan to sound like. And they found, sound even better in my room once I figured out to be a complete dick and ticked, tipped them up and then use that emotive. I mean, I was using my crowns. I'm just avoiding that for reasons because the clips are on them, but. This is epicmusicplayback.com. If that doesn't exist, please someone buy it and put my name on there and my face. These are sit down and pay attention speakers. These are speakers that demand your attention. They demand your entire room. They demand a lot of your bank account. And they demand that you listen to them very carefully. Uh, I really don't like bad music on them. That's another thing because you're getting so much. I, I won't even, I don't want to confuse you by saying you get so much detail. Everything that would be considered in the range of detail, like, oh yeah, that'd be a, you're getting that much of it. Like you're in the right position, forgetting about all the other things I said about, oh, you want if you're off center, off axis, what if the speaker, pretending they're perfect and you've owned them now and they're, they're ready to go, the low end, is sufficient, I would still consider adding a sub and he's already got a Martin Logan matching sub, which he's been using now because he didn't want to have it sent here. So you just have everything. But I would consider adding a sub if you really want low end. These can, can hit your chest with a thump, but they will not dead mouse you to completion. 
you are buying these speakers for those panels. They just happen to come with like mid bass and bass. They come with bass. They don't come with sub bass. They come with bass. In fact, those big ones I was talking about, the CL Arts, had like a stack of 315s behind them. Because the panels themselves shouldn't really attempt to do bass. That's a little bit too much. That's still always going to be a, the solution. Well, that was a thing. Mech Warriors 2. I did have a few moments where I was standing behind the couch before I put the pucks in. I was going, I just put them back on. And I went, is my surround sound on? Did I leave this in surround sound mute? Like, how does, what? And I put my ear against that speaker. To my dismay, it was not playing. Well, actually, no, to my exuberance, it was not playing. They do that sort of sound. They do that sort of like, once you're in the perfect spot, there is no worries. It's going to sound wider than it is. It's going to detail an image perfectly. They talk a lot about imaging in the book and how, well, you, you go straight if you want uh, less sharpness and you keep tilting it in and get more and more of that tweeter mid-range pointing at you and then the array will give you perfect. Then you go straight at you or it might be too much. Again, it's all about placement, but once you get that placement done, these are some of the best speakers you can own. It's, it's not that hard to imagine. Look at them. You have to put up with the shipping, the risk of shipping them, the weight. I don't know much they weigh. It's a lot. That, that door fucking back cover should not weigh like four pounds. It's unnecessary, Martin Logan, but I'm glad you did it. The box is just... It's, it's just box. It's just matte black box. Oh, it is ported down. I should point that out. There is a down firing port um, there. A big down firing port. Like if you own ferrets, don't leave these speakers out because your ferret's going to go in there. It's going to say, oh shit. And you're never going to find your ferret. And then you're going to put on Interstellar and it just, it, you, ferret died in your speaker. These are real life tips I'm giving you here, people. Really. They look beautiful. They're remarkably well built, except for that one seems to have gotten damaged and shipping and the top bit has popped. I actually started this review and then noticed that because 100 watt bulb, I'm like, fuck, so the owner's gonna come and we're gonna try to get that back in. But I mean, they ship it pretty generously in foam. Like it's got a bottom foam, it's got a middle foam, it's got a top foam, it's got a shaft. It's got a cardboard shaft. You have to sort of work it out. I've unboxed these on the unboxing channel, Zeos. Link to you unboxing the Martin Logans the first time, because I didn't show the second time. Then I had to rebox it, and then I had to unbox it again, and now I'm gonna have to rebox it when he comes to take them and puts them in his SUV so that he can unbox them again. These are sluts. Um, I hope Audio Advisor likes this video. I mean, I'm not making it for them, I'm making it for Joe, who's like, you gotta do some Martin Logans, you gotta get some electrostatics on there. And uh, people have been screaming Magnapan. If you're gonna, uh, someone link to the people who are screaming Magnapan to this moment. Hello, Magnapan fans. Yes, I will look into the systems because their systems don't have a base module. They're just flat panels, which by the way, flat panels mean that you literally can't tune the brightness. So you get a little bit less control, but they also mean you don't get any low end and they're trying to do mid range. So. They're super cheap, they're like 600 bucks. They're way easier to build and they're American made, which is like, wow. Uh, but I know people who have had ancient Magna Pans that stand by them as one of the best speakers I've ever owned. I just have to get a set, use them, try not to fall in love, because I know as soon as I integrate my 10 inch subs down there and I use mini DSP, that they're gonna be one of the best things I've ever heard. But do they need to be here? Because my biggest problem with when I add speakers to this room is I do have this projection screen. It comes down and I built it so that it sort of ends here. So that back in the day, I could put a speaker behind it. But that won't work if the speaker is two and a half feet into my living room. Well, I'm sorry. Speaker is four feet into my living room. That doesn't work. Again, had these been my speakers from day one, I would have figured out that th this, this is it. Never move them. Spray paint the floor so you see exactly where the feet go. Never touch them. And then I would have built a different screen and I would have a different way the things are laid out. 
you have to let, if you're going for these speakers, they are more important than your room layout. You get them, you configure them. And another thing, if you if this couch isn't there, or this day bed isn't there, and then you put it there afterwards, shit's gonna change. Because this is emitting sound like this in every direction. And adding this big soft thing means it's absorbing, which makes it sound different than if it was nothing. That's why that these coffee tables are here. Because I'm trying to mentally give it some balance in the room and the room is slightly wider on this side and it's like, oh God, but I'm close enough here. How wide is this? Uh, I'm like seven and a half feet from my head to the speaker and the speakers are less than that apart. They want that, That's they don't, this is not uh, conform to that equilateral triangle. That is not how electrostatics work. Not Martin Logan electrostatics, at least with the curve. These, you have to have them closer together than you are to them. And this is just about perfect. And I have to sound demo these next, which is going to be, what's the word? A pain in my ass, that's the word. See, I'm standing. Eh. Eh. Oh. I mean, it's not, it's not exactly a complicated track that was Nocturne from Tron OSD, but that bottom part of the speaker, of the, of the panel, is sending out the wave the same time as the top, but that wave is not this giant shape. There's multiple hundreds of millions of little waves, and so when you get up top, that bottom one cancels out the top one, which is why you have to tilt the back up and be exactly in the center. Exactly, like precisely, like precisely exactly in the center. I love my ohms because I don't follow any of these rules. Oh, what's that? Speakers, uh, just keep pushing it back. Ah, uh, you don't need to push it back against the wall. These follow, these go the other direction. You have to, everything has to be perfect. It's worth it. They are certainly more detail oriented than my ohms, but they're still not quite as detail oriented as a directional tweeter, a single directional tweeter, but you're getting this. Like, well, that's three schools of thought. The ohms are on one end of the spectrum, these are on the other end of the spectrum, and a normal bookshelf speaker, maybe with a sub, is like dead center, average, as much as you could say the triangles are average. But I mean, that that's the dealio. Bubbles by Yoshi Hor Yoshi Horikawa. Ah. Like, trust me. You want a pair of these, even if your room is gonna be bad, because I think once you get them, if you get them and you know the potential, you will destroy your life making them sound good. You'll destroy your life. And that's what some people need. Some people, we're all stuck at home for the foreseeable future, because I'm doing this like one week into the fucking lockdown of the world. And I, I can see many people having a lot of free time. And if you have free money, why not? Order them up. 30 day home guarantee. If they're messed up, do it. Do it. Now I'm, I have to be done. I, I could just keep talking, but Zeos knows his, Zeos knows when he's getting boring and rambling. I, I mean, you love my rambling. I mean, we just, wallpapers are great. So why not? It's, I've done this in a lot of videos where I'm like, oh, the speaker is like, it's painting this picture in the middle. I was fucking lying. These are painting the picture in the middle. These might as well, you may as well just hang a projection screen between the uprights and project the sound that's happening on it because that's what it looks like. There's no guessing. It's, oh, there, there's everything. Every sound you've ever wanted to hear. And somehow those low end eights fill in. They just come right up. I'm gonna talk about those Klipsch heresies and there's a very big problem with them. The tweeters are down there. Of course the speakers ends down there. And uh... <laughs> I want to just... I can't keep playing music. I'm just going to get pulled. All right, if you want to hear me play music on these on my $1,500 microphones, which 
cost so little now compared to these. Um, check out the sound demo in the description. Uh, that wallpaper, which I'm sure Joe will appreciate, is in the description as well, along with every wallpaper I've ever used is on my Patreon and Subscribestar. Those two ways are to support this channel. And when um, I hurt my back bringing things up the steps, those will pay for my medical bills and feed the cat and keep me from hoarding toilet paper. I promise to not buy any more toilet paper as long as you guys support me. That's the rule. Check those out. Five dollar tier, see these reviews early. Five dollar tier, ask me any questions on platform. Five dollar tier is be in the yard sale when I sell things. I have one pair of speakers there. Uh, those a little Prisonous Eris that'll definitely be in the yard sale coming up once that review is done. But yeah, if you want to have any of those benefits, five dollar tier. The ten dollar tier where Joe is, and you can be like, hey Joe. Such nice speakers. Uh, that uh, gets you to the private behind the scenes Telegram chat where we arrange all this sort of cool stuff. And everybody can ask me questions all the time. Like, hey, is my apartment big enough for this? I'm gonna be like, oh, no one's apartment is. But if you dedicate a chunk, a chunk, you might be able to gain some of this magic power. Uh, above that are other tiers that are not yet used. Uh, you can support me on those tiers all you want, but there are Benefits coming where I'm going to be sending out uh, gear that I have here that I'm not using and I don't feel like selling. So it'll be sort of like a hardware exchange, only it goes from one person to the next person to the next person to the next person, then back to me for checking and then back out. And you could add things to the box and take it out. It's going to be a good community effort. I just have to make sure that it pays well enough from the tiers so that I can insure it. And if it gets messed up or something, it, it's covered. So we're working on that. Keep an eye out for that. Oh, and Exponent is going to happen in August unless the world ends. And that's it. That's it. Tomorrow's video will be the sound demo of these. Uh, I haven't picked tracks yet. It's going to be interesting. I'm probably also going to use the same tracks in the Heresy and the Precedence because there's only three speakers I've got. Anyway, thank you for stopping by on this 45 minute rant. I hope you at least grasp the concept. Like it, it's more of a conceptual thing and a pain in the ass thing that you have to like work around to even consider these. If you have them in your cart, and you're like, oh, but I'm lazy. I just want my speakers to sound good. These are not your speakers. These are not your speakers. But if you're excited by all the words that came out of my mouth, if you looked at that PDF and you're like, oh my God, I get to use a flashlight. Oh, I get to use a flashlight. Honey, I get to use a flashlight. And it's like, oh. buy them. You can make them great. You just have to put in the effort. And uh, I will link to also the uh, the chuck dog things, the table bench cookies. Because I think, frankly, I think they're the most important part of the setup. I would give these a mediocre review if they only sounded good not here and not here, but like here. If I had to squat for them to sound great, that would not be the best scenario. So Chewbacca slept through this entire thing. Uh, I'm going to take a nap and make a steak. And uh, I'll see you all tomorrow for the sound demo. And then in the future for whatever. Check out Hi-Fi Guides and the Hi-Fi Guide forums, by the way. Because in case you want a real audio forum for real audio forum men and women, that's the one. Peace.